Hey everyone, welcome to this short video where we'll be looking at setting up WordPress in a way which makes it more suitable for use as a content management system. Before we get started, we should probably ask what we mean by this. WordPress, as many people know, started life as a piece of software built for blogging. That means it was built to do the things that blogs do, the writing and editing of posts, commenting and so on. Over time though, WordPress has grown and changed hugely. One of the ways it has changed the most is that it now supports a rich set of functionality which makes it less like a pure blogging platform and more a tool which can be used to deliver sites which have rich content and complex content types. WordPress can also be used to multi-surface content. This means you can write a bit of content once and then display it in several different places without duplicating, which saves time and energy for website editors. In order to make WordPress more CMS-like though, there are a number of techniques and tricks which can be brought to bear, and it is these we'll be focusing on in this video tutorial. We're going to start off with a brand new WordPress installation. We won't go through the steps that lead up to this point, there are plenty of online tutorials which show you how to do this, but we're at the stage where we've run a new installation, and now we'll just log in. Now that we're looking at the dashboard, we'll first of all make some simple tweaks before we get into the detail a bit more. By default, WordPress installs with a sample post and a sample page. The first thing we'll do is to get rid of these. While we're in the Pages section, we're going to create two new pages. Later on, you may need to change or remove these depending on your particular site but in 99% of cases you'll want them, so it's worth doing now at this early stage. So first we'll create a home page by clicking add new page and we'll call this home. Click publish straight away and then we'll also add one called news and we'll publish that one as well. On the edit page screen you might have noticed that WordPress throws up this box suggesting that we change permalinks. This is a good idea as the default which is question mark page ID equals and then a number, isn't very friendly either for users or for Google. We'll change that now. You can either click this change permalinks box here or you can go to settings, permalinks and do it in there. We'll select month and name, save changes and that's done. Now we're going to point WordPress at the two pages that we created. We do this in settings and reading. So we're going to choose a static page, front page is going to be the one that we created called home and our post page the one called news and we'll click save. So what have we done here? Well for a blog you'd normally have the list of posts as the home page. Here because we're thinking about a website which has a separate home page and news page we're telling WordPress to show a static page for the home page and have a separate page which lists the blog or news items. Again, you can change this later if you need. We'll just have a quick look over at the front end to check. Here's our website and you'll see we've got a home page and a news page, although obviously we haven't got any posts yet. One of the other things you might have noticed about the home page is that we've got a comment box displaying down here at the bottom of the page. For some sites this might be what you want, but for the vast majority it's likely that you'll want comments on posts or news articles only and not on the pages themselves. And as we're for now going to be populating our site with pages, it makes sense to turn the comment box off by default, build our site and then re-enable it for any new posts further down the line. So we go back to our dashboard, we do this in settings, discussion, and then there's a box here which says allow people to put comments, post comments on new articles. So we uncheck that, scroll down, click save changes. Now that we've unchecked that, any new pages that we create won't have the comment box on them. However, our two pages that we've already created do. So we'll just quickly change that, we're going into pages, all pages, and we use the quick edit option here. And we'll just uncheck allow comments on each of the pages that we created. We'll pop back over to the front end and refresh this and you'll see that the comment box has disappeared. Now we're ready to get into a bit of detail. Before we do that we need to familiarise ourselves with two important concepts in WordPress. 
The first of these is a WordPress theme. The easiest way of describing a theme is to use the analogy of a car. If the core WordPress software is the engine and transmission, then the theme is the chassis, bodywork and outer shell. WordPress themes are widely available. If you do a Google search, you'll find thousands. Some are free and some are paid for, or you can build your own from scratch. A quick word of caution here though, it's generally best to stick to trusted sources for WordPress themes, as there are some nefarious sites out there which feature free themes with nasty virus-ridden bits of code. A good place to look is the official WordPress theme directory. All of these themes have been vetted and checked. So if we go into appearance themes here, and go to install themes up at the top. This search here is going to go away and use the official directory. So if we try simple, this will then return all of the themes that are on the WordPress directory, which match the keyword simple. And you can see the variety of the designs that are displayed here. We'll just choose one of these randomly Click install, it takes a minute to download, and then we'll activate that theme immediately. Go over to our front end of our site, and if we refresh, and you'll see immediately this rather garish, but very definitely different theme is active. If we go back to our 2012 theme, which was our original one, and activate it, we'll pop back over to the live site, refresh again, and you'll see we'll back to, back to where we were. Themes can also make WordPress work differently. The WordPress core software isn't and shouldn't be changed, but themes can alter front-end functionality or change the way the dashboard looks and works. The beauty of WordPress themes is that they are, or should be, self-contained. All of the CSS, all the individual files that form part of your site, are held in the theme folder. Let's have a quick look at that now. So we'll just pop across and have a look at our WordPress directory here. Now inside WP content, you'll see a themes folder, and inside that are the themes that are available to us. The one that we just downloaded, Childishly Simple, is all held within this directory here. Now we've covered the basics of themes, let's talk about templates. So, what is a template? Well, think of it as a different layout. A simple site might have, for example, a home page template where the content takes up the whole width of the page, or a sub page template which has a navigation bar on one side, or a gallery template for showcasing projects or products and so on. We're not going to worry about how our templates look today, but we are going to look at a powerful way of using WordPress to populate different templates with different content. In WordPress, templates are most often individual files within our theme folder. And once you've added a template and given it some code to tell WordPress that this is a template, you'll see it appear on our edit page as an option in a dropdown. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be creating templates using the default WordPress 2012 theme, but I'm going to follow best practice by doing this in what is called a child theme, so that any 2012 updates don't overwrite the changes I make. Child theming isn't covered by this tutorial, but again you'll find lots of information online on how to do this. So first, I'll select my child theme in Appearance Themes. So that's this one here which I created earlier, and I click Activate. If we go back to the front end, you'll notice absolutely nothing has changed. All I've done is told WordPress to use basically exactly the same theme as before, only now I can safely make some changes to it without them getting overwritten. With your text or code editor, open up your theme folder and create a new file in there. It can be named anything you like, as long as it doesn't conflict with any of the WordPress files. Now we're going to tell WordPress that this is a template file. This is done by adding the following code in at the top. And then we'll also drop in the standard header and footer and sidebar code. Our next step is to make use of WordPress's inbuilt custom fields. These have been a part of WordPress for some time and allow developers to add additional content to any page or post. The problem has been that these are not as user-friendly as they could be and to date haven't been configurable on a per-template basis. 
which meant if you created a custom field on one page, then it had been visible on all of your pages. To help us with this, we're going to install an incredibly powerful plugin called Advanced Custom Fields, which enables us to display fields on a per template basis. It still uses the WordPress native custom fields, but layers a user friendly interface over the top. It's a free plugin that has options to extend the field types by paying for premium ones. Now that we've installed the plugin and activated it, you'll see over here on the left menu we have the option Custom Fields visible to us. So if we go to Custom Fields, we add a new field group and call it Staff Details. And now we're going to add three fields. A bio field, we're going to make this a WYSIWYG. A job title field, we're going to just leave this as a single text and we'll have a mugshot as well. And this one we're going to make an image. Now here's the really good bit about advanced custom fields, which is that you can display these fields depending on a huge range of conditions in this location box here. You can choose to show or hide based on whether this is a page or a post, part of a particular post category or of a particular post type and so on. What we're interested in right now though is the option to only display these fields when users are editing a page which uses the staff details template. And to do that we simply select page template is equal to and then our staff details template. Before we leave this screen, we'll also scroll down and check the box next to hide on screen to get rid of our standard WordPress, what you see is what you get field. Again, later on you may find you want this depending on your particular scenario, but we'll hide it for now. So we'll click publish. Now we'll go and create a new staff member. So we go to pages, add new, and this time we'll select staff details from our template drop down on the right hand side here. You'll notice that the edit page dynamically updates when we do this and now shows the three fields we just created. So the bio field at the top here, which is a rich text field, our single text line, job title, and our image field for mugshot. So we'll add Jane Smith here, put in a bio, give her a job title, and select an image and then we'll click publish. Now our staff page on the front end of the site doesn't yet display anything but we'll change that now. First click back into our custom field group that we created and make a note of these field names. So we have bio, job underscore title and mugshot. Advanced Custom Fields creates these as you go, but you can edit them if you need to. With those in mind, we'll jump across into the Staff Details template, and now we're going to put in some code. Advanced Custom Fields provides a range of functions, but the two you'll use most often are get underscore field and the underscore field. The former gets the data from your particular field, and the latter displays it. Obviously the way you do this is entirely up to you and your coding preferences, but I'm going to grab the data at the top of the page here and then we'll display it a bit further down. Now that I've got my code in place, I'll click save, head back to our staff page and refresh and there we go are three bits of content displaying exactly as we'd expect. I've now created another staff member page, for John Jones, filled it out with different details, and published, and you'll see, as expected, we have the same template, but different content filling out that template. We've obviously only looked at the basics here, but you can hopefully see how we can now begin to create content blocks, which can be assigned to particular templates. This basic functionality can be expanded in all sorts of ways. Finally, before we wrap up, 
we'll have a look at the main navigation menu. WordPress supports two kinds of menu. The first automatically adds items to the menu as pages are added, and that's the type we've seen on our simple site so far. The second is more manual, but allows site editors to have much more control over what these menus display. We're going to use this second option. To switch to this, go to Appearance Menus. Now, provided our theme supports it, we'll be able to add and activate a custom menu. Choose a menu name such as Top Nav, click Create Menu, and then select it for our primary menu here and click Save. Now if we go back to the front end of our site and again refresh, you'll see there's nothing at all now displaying in our primary navigation here. We'll change that now. And to do that, you basically select the items you want, click Add to Menu, and then you can drag and drop them to the order that you want them to be. Back to our front end, refresh, there we go.